Um, I'm currently uh, rebuilding this uh, Commodore 128. Uh, yeah, picked up uh, I don't know a couple of years ago. Um, uh, at the time, it wasn't actually working, uh, and it seemed to have gone through a few better days than what it is at the moment. Yellowed and the labels all gone funny. It turned out the only thing that was actually wrong with it was the uh, SID chip was actually plugged in the uh, wrong way around. Um, nonetheless, it actually is quite a good machine. Um, it does turn on, it does work, it does load programs. Uh, admittedly, I don't have much uh, Commodore 128 software. Uh, most of my, my collection is uh, Commodore 64 uh, stuff. But nonetheless, I um, want to uh, kind of clean it up a bit. It's, it's a good machine. Uh, just recently, I uh, picked up uh, these uh, chips here. I'll see if I can focus it for you. There we go. Uh, these are... Uh, there we are. These uh, chips were uh, picked up uh, off of uh, an eBay seller uh, just the other day, and uh, he apparently had picked them up from someone else uh, off of uh, eBay. Uh, apparently, his uh, original seller uh, of these chips, basically the guy was a uh, computer uh, repairman from the 1980s, and so he had these uh, uh, Commodore 128 chips just sitting in a box, never tested them, never been used. So I thought I'd pick them up. You know, you never know when uh, you might come across a few uh, Commodore 128 uh, spare parts, you know, just uh, on eBay there. It seemed to be quite uh, rare. So at the top here we've got the uh, the uh, 8721 uh, PLA, which is the program Programmable Logic Array. array. Yeah, Can't talk tonight. Uh, the other one is the uh, 8722, which is the uh, MMU, Memory Management Unit. Then we've got the uh, 8563 Revision 9, which is interesting. I believe this particular chip, which uh, is actually the video uh, display controller for the 128, they actually had quite a number of issues with these chips um, in the early development of the 128. So uh, to pick up one of these um, apparently unused and intact, uh, I'm really happy with that. Um, hopefully nothing will go wrong with this particular unit's uh, uh, 8563, but you know if it does, then I've got a spare here. Uh, then the next one is the 8566, which is the uh, VIC-2. Uh, I believe the VIC-2 is actually really only used for the uh, uh, Commodore 64 mode. Uh, I don't think it's used for the Commodore 128 modes at all. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe. Um, oh, I'll look at that up afterwards anyway. The next one there at the bottom is the 8502, which is effectively the main CPU, aside from the Z80, of course. Uh, that one is... Um, somewhat instruction compatible with the original Commodore 64 uh, CPU, the uh, 6510, um, but that provides the uh, instruction sets for the 64 and the 128, uh, which coincidentally also runs at uh, 2.048 uh, uh, megahertz from memory. So, uh, beast of a CPU, uh, I guess for its time anyway. Anyway, I'll um, open this up and I'm going to test them out because the eBay seller I bought them from uh, he said to me that he didn't have a Commodore 128 to actually test um, these chips out on. So I'll test them out for him. When I picked up the machine and opened it up for the first time, I noticed that the 8721 uh, seemed to have uh, suffered a, a little bit of uh, corrosion on some of the pins. I suspect someone's actually tried to fix it as well. Um, not sure if you can actually see that or not, but some of the pins are uh, darker than the rest. Um, especially over here though, there's one particular pin, um, this one here, let's have a look, Where is it? there it is, that one there, this one here, it looks like as if it's been split but then put back together with a bit of solder or something, I don't know, the chip has been removed, in fact I think a lot of these chips have actually been removed off this board um, and sockets have been put in place because there's actually two different colours uh, of sockets, there's, there's some over here which are uh, black and then you've got blue I, mean, oh, I don't know it's just I suspect this machine's been uh, worked on before although the uh, person I bought it off uh, told me that he's never opened it up and which I'm not entirely sure it's actually quite true nonetheless um, I'm going to replace these chips with the ones I've got uh, to test them out now okay so this is really strange uh, this is actually the first time I've taken the cover off uh, this section of the uh, main board uh, on this side here, you can see the uh, 6566. Uh, um, well, obviously you can't at the moment, it's a little out of focus. Uh, there you go, 6566 on this side here, um, which is fine. But on this side, 
where the uh, 6563 should be, which it is, it's uh, not marked. It's not marked, which is very strange. Uh, on top of the chip, you can see there's scuff marks, which would suggest to me that it's been sanded down for whatever reason. I don't really know. But, uh, yeah, very strange. I've, I don't understand why that would actually occur, unless they were flattening the chip out and putting you know, a heat paste on there or something. But I still don't understand why they would do that. Okay, just a quick update before I power on the machine. I did actually replace the uh, CPU. Uh, it turns out the CPU, the uh, uh, 8721 uh, and the 8563 uh, were all um, uh, soldered in at some stage. So they're probably just from donor machines. But that's okay, I don't mind that. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, turn it on and see how it goes. Okay, so uh, as you can probably hear and now see, uh, I have my TV uh, set up and I have the uh, Commodore 128 uh, all ready to go uh, aside from power. Now unfortunately with my particular unit the actual switch itself is busted uh, so uh, just for a quick fix uh, my friend um, happened to uh, solder over the uh, terminals and basically just hot wire it if you will and that seems to have fixed that problem there temporarily. I, I do actually intend to get a, a fixed... Uh, oh, let me just turn this down I do intend to actually get a, uh, a, a fixed uh, switch for it, but I'm not entirely sure where to get one from. Maybe a Commodore 64 will actually uh, be a, a good donor for that, but uh, until then, the only way I can do it is uh, just by plugging in the power. And there we are. Came straight up. That's great. Okay, well what I'll do is I'll put the keyboard back in, uh, in place and I'll uh, run a couple of programs. I'm going to just uh, type something in here, it's an easter egg that uh, is part of the actual system itself um, just to prove that the machine is actually in fact running. There we go. So that's an uh, easter egg that's actually programmed into the machine by the uh, system designers um, which is uh, pretty cool. Okay. So, going to Commodore 64 mode. No, that's there. You go. Yep. And there we are. So into uh, Commodore 64 mode. Uh, I'll just load in the disk. Uh, this disk is actually uh, quite old. It's uh, one of the original disks I got in my uh, Commodore 64 collection uh, over uh, 15 years ago now, I believe. Uh, which is. Uh, down there. Uh, the one at the front is the first one I got and the one at the back is the second one I got uh, over the years. Um, and uh, they work quite well. Unfortunately the uh, SID chips need replacing. They, they've lost a couple of channels I think. But aside from that they uh, work quite nicely. Uh, whereas on this machine the SID chip works perfectly fine it's the old, and it's the older uh, 6581 so uh, go figure. Alright so the disc is in there. Um, sorry about the flickering I really can't help that. It's just an uh, artifact of the uh, CRT, I guess. Alright, so we'll load this up. What am I doing? I don't think that shift key actually works on my keyboard, which is going to be very interesting trying to span across two keys. Okay, so it does actually work, it's just uh, <laughs> you have to pretty much punch the bloody thing, so uh, it works. Um, maybe something sticky in there or dirty or whatever, I'll, I'll have to clean the keyboard out. This machine really does need a, uh, a complete rebuild, and I actually do intend to do that. And hopefully this will be the start of uh, a number of videos uh, that I'll put together uh, to demonstrate that and actually uh, show you how one could... Um, recover or restore a uh, Commodore 128. They're extremely extremely rare machines. They are not very good machines, but they're quite important for the uh, the Commodore history, uh, uh, the way I think. Anyway, I'll run this. Of course, the 1541 is quite slow of the IEC serial bus. So this might take a minute or two. I love this introduction, by the way.
think it's loading. Still. It went dark. Well, it's still loading. Every so often this uh, 1541 uh, chatters a bit. Oh, there you go. Yeah, disk error. Push button to continue. Don't think this is actually going to work. And as it is, I don't have a uh, <clears throat> joystick connected either. So I don't think I can really push the button. But, oh well, nonetheless, um, the machine works. The uh, chips work, which is great. So I've got spare parts now. But yeah, as I said before, I'll uh, I'll document the uh, process uh, involved uh, with uh, restoring this machine. It's a great machine, it really is. Um, it was <laughs> poorly designed in the past, so I might actually add a couple of fans or something to it, I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I might retrobrite it. Although I've heard uh, from a couple of people, uh, specifically Tezza, uh, who uh, uh, runs the uh, Classic Computer Collection, um, who actually inspired me to uh, to do this video, by the way? So thank you, Tessa. Um, he uh, has actually tried retro bright before, and uh, the uh, the solution isn't actually as permanent as one thinks. Uh, so, uh, or one would imagine. So, uh, I don't know, I'll, I'll try it anyway and see how we go. I'll just have to keep it in a box or something. I don't know. But yeah, there you go. Thanks for watching.